Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about the connection between taking the thyroid medication, level thyroxine, or Synthroid by the way, and the connection between taking these medications and weight gain. All right. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in treating thyroid problems, helping people lose weight, and then also treating other hormone imbalances. So if you are interested in these topics, do stick around and click the subscribe because I think you'll like the videos to come. So back to what we were talking about originally, and that is the connection between levothyroxine and Synthroid, like I said, and weight gain. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how could it possibly be the case that these medications can cause weight gain when they're actually designed to treat the opposite. They're actually designed to help you. They're not really designed for weight loss, but they're designed to improve your thyroid. And we all know that low thyroid function leads to weight gain. So if you improve that thyroid function, it should cause weight loss, right? And so you would be correct if in how you're th approaching it, but I'm here to tell you, and we're gonna explain why in just a second, how these medications can actually contribute to weight gain in certain individuals. So you need to listen to me carefully. I'm not saying that these medications always cause weight loss. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is in certain conditions, they can contribute to weight gain. And do me a favor, if you are one of those people that has experienced weight gain as a result of taking level thyroxine or Synthroid, by the way, please leave a comment below and just, just say, yes, I've experienced weight gain or not. Because what that will do is it'll help other people to realize that this is actually a problem. Because like I said, when you understand how this occurs, it's going to make sense. But if you're just hearing this for the first time, you're probably gonna be a little confused. So let's talk exactly about how it occurs. And to do that, we're gonna get the whiteboard because it's gonna be helpful to look at this. So what I have here is just some basic physiology of how the thyroid is functioning. So we're gonna talk about why this occurs, how it can possibly lead to weight gain, and then I'm gonna tell you what you can do about it. So with the tests that you wanna to order to see if it's happening in you, and then some of the treatment that you wanna do, or things that you can do about it. So let's first start by just looking at this generic um, sort of physiology of thyroid function, because you really need to understand this to understand how level thyroxine can contribute. So we have up here the pituitary gland, which is in your brain. Okay, the pituitary secretes a hormone called TSH. Now you guys all know about this, right? You know that what TSH is because if you have a thyroid condition, I guarantee that you've had this test before. And most doctors, they focus solely on the TSH. They, they use this as a marker to determine if you need more treatment or less treatment or whatever. So they're always focusing on this TSH. Now we're gonna explain why that's a problem in just a second, so bear with me. So the pituitary pumps out this hormone TSH, which acts on the thyroid, which is what you're looking at right here, this butterfly-shaped gland in the thyroid, and it stimulates the thyroid, that's what it's called, thyroid-stimulating hormone, to produce T4. It also produces a little bit of T3, but we're, we're gonna neglect that for now because it's not super important. But just so you know, it, does, it is there. But the majority of the hormone that's secreted from your thyroid is in the form T4. So why is this important? Well, we're, we're, it's really important because level thyroxine, so we're just gonna abbreviate level and synthroid here. These medications contain T4, okay? So these medications contain T4. Now, most doctors, they think, okay, well, if your thyroid is sluggish, meaning it's not working very well, then your body is having problems producing this T4. That's what they think. So they provide you with the T4 in the form of a medication, which looks exactly like the same T4 that your body produces naturally. And they say, okay, we're done now, right? Because we've given you the medication. If your thyroid is sluggish and it's not producing the thyroid that it needs, well, we're going to give you that. We're going to give you that T4 in the form of medication, and then all is going to be well, right? Okay, well, wrong, right? This is why. Okay, so T4 is actually not active in the body. Now, some of you might know this, but it's really important for all of you to have an understanding of why this is the case. T4 is not active by itself, okay? It doesn't do anything in your body. In order to be active, it must be converted to T3, okay? So your body, so remember, TSH to thyroid gland to T4, this is, how, this is all happening in the healthy sort of thyroid gland. It, the T4 must be converted to T3, and then when it's converted to T3, then it can sit on the receptors on your cells and you know turn on cellular activation. This is a check mark. Boom, we're good. Everything's turning on, so this is going to help you lose weight. This is going to help your hair grow back. This is going to help you not have depression or brain fog. Remember, those are all the symptoms you get if your thyroid is really low. And if you, in order to get that effect, get the benefit of those things going away, you need this T3. But in order to get this T3, it has to come from T4. It has to be converted. So doctors, they know this, by the way. They all know this because this is just physiology 101. It's not really debatable. This just, it's just the way that it is in your body. Everyone sort of just knows this. It's just physiology. But what doctors do is they make one big assumption. They think, okay, well, I'm providing you with the level and the Synthroid in the form of T4, and I'm going to make the assumption that all of this T4 is going to get converted to T3, and then when it gets converted to T3, it's going to have no problem doing all the things that we mentioned, 
activating genetic transcription and making your body feel better. But they're leaving out one important step. And that is your body doesn't always produce T3. It has an option. And the option is reverse T3. Okay, so RT3 or reverse T3, which you'll see right here. And we're, this is going to be important because we can talk about testing in just a second. So your body has the choice. It can choose to go into T3 or it can choose to go into reverse T3. So how does this relate to weight gain, right? Because this is really what we're talking about is how all of this relates to your weight gain. Well, reverse T3 sits on the receptor. They both try and sit on the exact same receptor on the cells, except when reverse T3 gets on it, it blocks it. Okay, so it doesn't matter if T3 is in your body, T3 will build up in your body, but if a reverse T3 is high, it sits on this receptor and prevents T3 from getting and doing its job. So in this way, you can think of reverse T3 and T3 as a yin and a yang, okay? So that now this is how it's gonna relate back to the level thyroxine and the synthroid and how this leads to weight gain. So imagine a scenario, if we're giving you T4, and instead of turning into T3, which is what we want, it's turning into reverse T3. So we're giving it to you and a lot is going down this pathway, and a little bit is going down this pathway. So you're gonna produce this reverse T3, which is then going to sit on the cell, on the receptor, and block the T3 from doing its job. This is how level thyroxine can contribute to weight gain. It's through this thing called thyroid metabolism. Now, if you don't understand this, and if you don't take it into account, then you're gonna be super confused because as you give more and more level and, and uh, synthroid, your body's saying, well, that's great, I, I appreciate it, but what I really need is the T3, and instead of making the T3, I'm gonna produce this reverse T3. And the higher this gets, the worse the situation becomes. The more of the blocking that occurs at the cellular level, the, the higher the T3s will pool up in, in, your, in your system and they won't be able to function. So you can actually have a normal T3, but if your reverse T3 is high, it really doesn't matter. So this is how it occurs. Okay, so as, as, and remember, as reverse T3 gets higher and higher, you're going to feel more hypothyroid. So you'll have more weight gain, you'll have more fatigue, you'll have more muscle pain, you'll have, you'll just continue to feel worse and worse and worse. Meanwhile, your doctor will be saying, hey, but your TSH is normal, so you must be fine, right? And that's definitely not how it occurs. Okay, so that's how this can all occur. Yes, there's a, there's a couple other things. I'm going to leave those out because I want to just illustrate it. It's easier to think about it in this way. But what can you do as a patient to see if this is happening in your body? Now, the good news is there are things that you can do, and they're actually not very difficult. What you need to do is you need to order a couple tests, and then we'll talk about a couple treatments here. And a couple of those, the test that you want to get is reverse T3. Remember, you can actually test for this. So you can look, just like we can check for TSH, we can check for T4, we can check for T3, we can also check for reverse T3. And the test is just serum reverse T3. So if you don't have it, go ask your doctor to order it. Just say, hey, I want to look at it. And if that reverse T3 is, guess what, really high, then you have an explanation as to what is going on in your body. Okay, the next thing you want to do, though, is you also want to get this free T3. So most of the time, your doctor will only be ordering the TSH because that's what they like. They like TSH because it makes it really simple. But you're going to need more than that. So you have to specifically ask for reverse T3 and free T3. And you want to check them all at the same time. And again, you'll see that your reverse T3 is high, and you'll probably see that your, reverse T your T3 is either normal or low. So it can be normal or it can be low. What you really care about is that reverse T3. So, you, so the next question is, what do I do about it if, if, I, if, it's, if I already, A, know that it's occurring, or B, suspect that it might be happening in my body? And that's actually a pretty easy answer too. There's two ways to go about doing it. The first way is that you can kind of take the natural approach. And so the natural approach is this. You're trying to promote those things which encourage the pathway down here. So you're trying to do things which increase the likelihood that your body's gonna take that T4 and then churn it into T3 so that it activates here. Okay, so that's one method. Simultaneously, you can also be trying to affect and downplay the things that make your body turn T4 into reverse T3. So you can do this. So it's things like exercise and diet. Guess what? They do. They increase how likely it is for T4 to turn into T3. You can also not do things like calorie restriction or certain fad diets because guess what? Those things, well, actually, what they do is they increase reverse T3 in your body. You can also take certain supplements. So supplements like zinc and selenium and guggle extract, those things actually drive this pathway down to the down the T3 pathway so that it gets on your cell. So you can take those. I have it in a supplement form. A T3 conversion booster is what I call it because it, it increases the conversion of T4 to T3. It's exactly what it's doing. Um, so there are supplements that you can take which support this pathway. So that's number one. We'll say we'll call it the natural, natural way to do it. Number two, you can also just take certain medication which bypass this pathway and you can just say, hey, instead of providing the T4 at this level, what am I going to do? I'm going to I'm going to bypass this and I'm going to directly provide my body with T3. Then guess what? You don't have to worry about the T4 to T3 conversion process because your body just bypasses it. Much like, let's use an example. Let's say, what if your doctor gave you TSH? 
well, technically, maybe that would stimulate your thyroid and then maybe you produce T4 and maybe you produce T3. But we don't do that. Instead, we give T4. But what if you just said, well, I'm going to bypass the T4 and just give T3. And you can actually do that. And you can take certain medications, which include things like natural desiccated thy thyroid medication, armor thyroid, NP thyroid. And you can also just take N or T3 by itself. And again, that will bypass this thing. Now, in reality, what I'd recommend, let's call this T3 meds. So you can take the natural approach and then both the, um, you can also take the medication approach. Now, in reality, what I recommend is you do a combination of both of these things. You want to do optimize your diet and your exercise, take supplements, which encourage the conversion of T4 to T3 and downplay the conversion to reverse T3. And all, by the way, those will all help you with weight loss anyway. And then consider using these T3 medications. Not everyone has to, but it will be really helpful. All right. So this helps explain why certain patients when given T4 in the form of levothyroxine or Synthroid will actually gain weight when they do it. And believe me, I understand that it may not sound plausible when you think about it out loud, or if you just think about it, but you have to have this understanding that T4 is not the end step here. You have to go all the way down to the receptor. And once you have this understanding, it becomes a lot more clear. So again, I want to hear from you. If you have been somebody who has gained weight after taking levothyroxine or Synthroid, definitely, definitely leave your comment below and say, yes, I have, because there will be, I guarantee you, there'll be people that'll say, I took Synthroid and I lost weight. And so everything that you're saying is wrong. No, that's, that's not how it goes. It's very possible for one person to gain weight and another person to lose weight while taking the same medicine. I promise that that can occur. But it doesn't mean that one person is right or wrong. It just means that something different is happening inside your body. So leave that comment below. If you're interested in some of the supplements that help improve this process and can help increase T4 to T3 conversion instead of T4 to RT3 conversion, I'll have some of that information in the comments below. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.